Hello and welcome to the instructional video for the uh, 2020 Chasson 627 uh, GA. Please excuse uh, any uh, noise interruptions, it is a bit windy today. Uh, this is a customer's vehicle so there might be some spec changes uh, from uh, standard but I'll try and outline these uh, when we go around the vehicle. So we're going to start from outside, we'll have a walk around the outside and then we'll go to the inside of the vehicle. So first of all, on a uh, Ford Transit, to open the bonnet we use the engine key and we turn left to release and then right. Obviously we need two hands and that will allow you to lift the bonnet. Moving round uh, the vehicle, uh, the first locker that we come to is the gas locker. Uh, and the gas locker allows a uh, fitment of one uh, bottle which needs to be securely uh, fastened using the straps and also making sure that none of the holes in the bottom of the gas locker are covered because if you do have a leak it will drain out um, the bottom of the van. We have a regulator and then the gas connector or the pigtail connects from uh, screws onto this uh, head here which is uh, normal righty tighty or clockwise onto the gas bottle and remember your gas bottle is um, an opposite thread um, so a left hand thread to tighten. Uh, as we move further down the vehicle we have uh, an external barbecue point and then we have our fridge vents. The fridge vents uh, make sure that they are not uh, jet washed in normal weather they are fine but if you're going to be using the vehicle in winter you may want to consider uh, getting winter covers. Behind the driver's side um, rear wheel we have a little symbol that tells me we have a drain point and if we look underneath the vehicle this is your grey waste and basically works is we have pull to open and then push to close and that is the waste uh, that comes from your sink and shower so it's soap or foodie water. Um, above this particular vehicle is fitted with a Fiamma awning the Fiamma awning works by having an awning pole, which is currently in the garage, which is here. This awning pole, there's a hook at the end, which connects up to the um, right hand side of the awning itself. So we hook it on and wind it out. We wind it out just as far as we need to reach it, so we can lift up and reach it. And then on the, in the front of the box that uh, comes out, there are two legs, they need to be dropped down to support the weight of the awning. So we extend them and then support the weight of the awning. Then we can keep winding the awning out uh, and walk it out as far as you need it to go. Um, but again, making sure it's supported by those legs. When it comes to the awning, we need to make sure that we don't use it in any wind because it will blow over the van. And we also need to be very careful uh, in case it, it, with rain as well. Um, I try and leave one leg a bit lower to let the rain drain off but I wouldn't leave the awning uh, wet because it'll go mouldy uh, in the uh, in its box when it's wind, uh, wound back in. Moving to the back to the garage in here we have the factory carpets the, the mats or the carpets for the cab area we have some silver screens uh, which uh, go on the external of the vehicle and then we have a box here which has the awning pole the pegs for the feet of the awning and also a rafter the rafter sits in between the arms of the awning to give it more stability. There is 240 and 12 volt power and a heating vent in the garage also. In the back as well we have a fire extinguisher and a tyre inflation kit which consists of some glue and also a compressor. We also have a um, smoke alarm and a new hookup cable for you. As we move to the back of the vehicle, there are already fixing points for a bike rack if you want to have one of these fitted. And above is the high level uh, reverse camera. Moving around, we have another access to the uh, garage. And also a really important bit is this um, black box which has a blue diamond and a button on the side. This is your frost protection valve. And basically it's a valve that's connected to the boiler that if that box senses that it goes below six degrees there might be a chance of it freezing so it will drain down and it will clunk itself automatically and it will drain the water to reset this we need to turn the diamond 90 degrees and push the button in okay. so let's turn the diamond and push the button in so it is flush uh, like the position i'm showing you now 
if the button doesn't go in the area is still too cold so we need to get the heating back on as you can see these are heating pipes that will warm that area up so you can reset it and close that valve it's just a um, to protect itself so then we don't get any frozen water uh, in the boiler again the manuals will give you details of everything I've spoken about so you can refer to that as well this here is your external shower point connected up to the water system and it is just cold on the chasson this is your vent for your boiler uh, or the flue be careful it will get warm and make sure that there's no leaves or debris uh, in the vent moving around further down we have our toilet cassette and all we do is lift pull this little handle up and it the toilet will slide out and then to put it back in make sure it is flat and it will slide in and then connect down again more details on the toilet cassette can be found in your manuals this flap here lifts up to expose the mains hookup you've got a new lead in the back so you can hook up into uh, that and then into the side and then this uh, locker is your outside what we call a convenience locker and this is uh, pretty much all the services for the water and the electrics from Chasson so first of all we have our electrics so we have our main trip switches we have all our fuses and again the manuals will tell you what they refer to but there are little symbols on them and also our battery charger the battery charger needs to be on and you'll see it's pushed in um, and that'll allow power from when you are hooked up to the leisure battery this here is our fresh water tank to fill up the tank we just slide this arm out uh, and then we can fill up with a hose pipe you'll know when it's full because it will come out of the uh, out of the pipe to drain down our fresh water we have two levels we can either need to drain down the whole um, tank or just drain down to 20 litres and this is what we call the maximum and minimum level and that refers to this little lever here so if we have it up it says it allows us to only fill up to 20 litres and which is what we like to try to the amount that we need to have in when we're traveling so we need to lift that up turn the pump on and that'll pump water out till it's to 20 liters if we want to fill the tank up fully we need to make sure that's down in that position so then we can fill it up to the top to drain down the water there are two pipes underneath one which you can see has a cap on and then one that doesn't the one that doesn't is the drain for the 20 liters and the one with a cap is for the main drain to drain down the whole tank so to drain the tank fully, say in winter, we need to pull that cap off and it will allow the whole um, tank to drain. Finally, on the outside of the vehicle, we have our diesel and our add blue. And that's it for the outside. Now let's move to the uh, inside of the vehicle. So we're now moving to the inside of the vehicle. We've got to start from the back and move our way uh, forward. First of all, all the windows and the uh, skylights in this vehicle have black have fly screens and blackout blinds. These simply click onto the uh, bottom. Be careful and make sure that they are um, connected properly. And then we just squeeze and that will allow then us to use the blinds. Again, everything is designed to be as strong but as light as possible. So please don't be heavy handed with these. To open the windows, we just push the button and turn the latch and that will allow us to open it. The... Um, blinds themselves um, have it on both obviously both sides uh, which will go uh, up and down as well and they are on they're magnetic so they will magnet themselves and stick up there are various lights underneath uh, the units that are touch we have power points up in this corner and then we also have because this is a, uh, the premium model we have a, an electric fan light at the back for air circulation this double uh, bed is two, obviously two singles that can make into a double. We have a mechanism here that slides up and we can use then the piece to make it into a full double bed. Underneath each side we have uh, deep uh, wardrobes with rails. And then the vault, there's also uh, an access point here which is just for us for uh, servicing um, but just so you know what it is. There is also another hatch which has some more storage and again another point with just access to some of the services which are for us and you can see that there's heating pipes that run around the vehicle uh, to keep it nice and warm for you. 
Uh, and again, these here are heating points around the van. You'll see there are flaps in, in so which you can regulate the uh, airflow. If you do close one off here, it will send more heat to another part of the uh, vehicle. On this side, we have the shower, which needs to be strapped in when you are traveling. The shower is uh, relatively, uh, shower toilet is relatively simple. Um, the um, screen does come around to give some uh, protection. We have a torture cupboard uh, that slides. Again, vents above. Uh, with a rail uh, for hanging wet towels or wet suits and the shower works as a normal shower just bear in mind on the shower it is a hand shower so you do have to hold it the toilet itself uh, moves so you can get comfortable and underneath there is a, a handle which allows then the blade to open I don't know if you can see that and the blade then allows access into the toilet you'll see here we have the flush and then this is an indicator to tell me when the toilet is full. The procedure for the toilet is simple. It is um, open the blade using the handle, uh, do your business, flush the toilet and then close the blade uh, afterwards. This here is on the opposite is your fridge. Uh, the fridge is dead simple. Uh, there is obviously a fridge and then a freezer compartment above. Uh, and then you have a little latch so you can lock it when traveling. Basically, we have power on and off. This has, uh, is a three-way fridge, so it has 12 volt, uh, gas and mains. So it will, it will be fueled off either of those three. Or automatic. When you choose automatic, it will just decide what the best source of power is. So if you are hooked up, it will always look to use hookup. If, you, if, you, if it doesn't find um, mains power, it will always work. try and work on gas. And if it can't find gas, it will then work on your 12 volt system. But be, please bear in mind, if it works on, if, if, if your engine is not running, it will come up an error. So the 12 volt system will only work when the engine is running. Up here is your TV bracket, which has a little um, tab, which you just push or squeeze to allow it to release. And then it will slide out fully. The TV sits on here and you can watch it in the, in the front or the rear of the vehicle. This particular vehicle has an aerial fitted. Uh, which has a power on and off you can see the blue light comes on and then a booster you also have 12 volt um, the aerial um, connector um, and also a 240 volt as well and we also have here a little storage area with another 12 volt power and this vehicle has a solar panel fitted and you'll see the solar panel controller the flashing lights uh, flashing light means that the solar panel is working moving to the kitchen uh, there is a uh, obviously an oven and, and grill, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it has an electric element as well. There is a storage cupboard uh, above, uh, and obviously the sink. Um, again, all this stuff is pretty um, pretty self-explanatory. To work the drop-down bed at the front, you'll see the drop-down bed is here, it, and it will drop down to the level of this um, these seat uh, headrests. We use a small key. You can see the keys in there. Quarter turn to the uh, clockwise which allow it to activate because it's just a bit of a safety mechanism and then the controller is under here you always need to make sure uh, that there is nothing that is going to foul the bed as it goes down so you can see want to make sure that the bed doesn't hit the front seats but in most cases these will be turned and also make sure that this doesn't hit these cushions if you need to just drop them down also make sure nothing is left uh, on the uh, on the table the front uh, the passenger seats uh, the seat belts are here you can hide these behind the um behind the seat back if you're not going to use them and if you are traveling with people we just need to make sure you move this seat um, base and there is a, a piece of wood underneath that needs moving as you can see the table will slide and move and also drop down using this red lever and it will also open out whenever you open the table make sure that this bar is out to support it and then the table can be opened um, so you can have a, a few guests in the vehicle. Underneath this, um, the chair is, again, some more storage and another uh, access hatch, which you can use for storing valuables uh, if needed. Uh, you can't access under, under uh, this, because that's where your water tank is. And there is some more uh, storage under that seat 
uh, as well. Your leisure battery in these vehicles is underneath your uh, passenger seat. Um, so it is not easily accessible, uh, but you shouldn't need to go in there anyway. Around the vehicle, you'll see various light switches uh, around and uh, about, and you'll work out how to use them uh, yourselves. And again, just moving back to the to the roof lights, each one has uh, blinds uh, and uh, blacket blinds, sorry, and fly screens. Uh, to use these roof lights, we just we just spin these ones. Right, let's move to the. Um, uh, heating and hot water system and the control panel. Uh, this is your uh, your Truma diesel and electric heating and hot water system. All the details for this can be found in the book, um, which gives a really comprehensive uh, guide how to use it. I'd ask that you have a practice with it, read the book carefully, and if you need me to give you any tips um, or any more advice, uh, just give us a call. Now moving to the main control panel. Basically we have power on and off. So that is our master switch. We have lights, we have the pump, we have the awning light, which is a light outside the vehicle. We have this little symbol, which is the picture of a vehicle uh, in a, the rear of a vehicle in a battery. So that's our leisure battery. And if we press it, it tells me that we're full. And the next one is our engine battery. Which again tells me that we're a bit low, but we've, we've, we just need to run the vehicle. This next one here tells me our fresh water. So it tells me I've pretty much got full fresh water. And also this low level here is your waste water. So it doesn't have a specific button, but it will light up and flash when your waste water is getting full. And then finally, we have uh, this button, which is for the um, brightness of this screen. So if you want to make this whole screen brighter or, or dimmer, you just hold that button. When you are hooked up, this little symbol will also uh, light up. Uh, the habitation door again is very simple. There is uh, fly screens when the door is open on the side. Make sure though uh, that the door is fully open and connected. If there is a gust of wind, it will go through the fly screen. There's a bin underneath because this is the premium uh, model. And then let's move uh, to the um, cab area. Above the cab area, there is storage with again a big skylight. Again, you just push the buttons to release these. Um, release the skylight at the front. Make sure that all windows uh, are closed before you travel um, and you need to run through a full checklist to ensure that you're safe before you travel. There are little light switches underneath for these LED reading lights, USB chargers um, and there, are, there isn't a curtain because this um, vehicle I will have Remis cab blinds. So let's move to the cab area Again, all pretty self-explanatory uh, and we're all used to driving vehicles. First of all, when you're going to reverse, your reversing camera will come on uh, automatically. Uh, the radio is pretty simple. The rear air conditioning uh, controls here. Uh, the gearbox will obviously has park, reverse, neutral, drive and manual. And if you want to go in the manual, you then use these buttons on the side. There's a 12 volt and a USB uh, charger. Um, obviously on this side, we have the indicators. Um, on this side we have our uh, uh, wipers and then on the uh, side here we have our uh, lights. So we have side lights, a main beam or you can have automatic lights because this vehicle is fitted with automatic lights and automatic wipers as well. Also you can't really see from my screen but it has the, it has the um, quick clear uh, windscreen um, so you can um, get that cleared. Uh, pretty quickly. There are controls for the um, windows here uh, and there's also central locking and also uh, adjustments for the um, re uh, rear view, uh, sorry the wing mirrors uh, that are electric uh, as well. Up up here you can put your phone and it will connect and there are further uh, 12 volt, um, there's a further, further 12 volt power uh, outlet as well. To spin the seats all we do is pull this little handle out, which will allow it to release. On the passenger seat, it often will allow, allow to go pretty simple, uh, pretty easily round. But if you are struggling and it is fouling on something, just use the seat slider to move the sleep, seat backwards and forwards to allow it to uh, get round. And as you can see just there, there's the uh, storage box for your uh, leisure battery. So that's pretty much it for the um, overview of the 627. Uh, GA uh, premium if you again uh, if you do need us to 
uh, help you with the uh, use of the vehicle, don't hesitate to give us um, a call. Um, and thank you.